Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisor Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's not bright, it's not early. It is about eight o'clock, 8.50, it's nine o'clock. It's almost the afternoon. You're saying, Chris, what happened? Had to take the little chillings to school today. It was nice to be able to do that every once in a while. Anyways, what I wanna bring up to our attention here First thing first, uh, Bitcoin on the daily has a bit of a bear flag, right? So call that a bear flag. Did I draw this right? Did I draw it correctly? Um, if that is the pull, then here's your measure move down to uh, 21,644, which is in, not in line with this low, but it's in line with this low. Also going to be in line with the CME gap, which we've been talking about. Gaps like to get filled. 98% chance the gap is going to get filled. We just don't know when it's going to get filled because we got gaps to the upside. We got gaps uh, to the downside. Right? Um, I think we even had a gap just recently, which was filled. Yes, this one right here. So we gapped down. Boom. Filled it. Touched the, tw the green 55 and rejected. And uh, so I'm going to give the case for the bulls, the case for the bears. Uh, case for the bulls, I'll bring up my secondary chart and I will take off the MACD. Um, I also want to bring up the uh, accumulation distribution indicator on the weekly time frame. This guy took a negative slope. When this goes negative, gives you the bearish bias as well. Um, but we also have a gap to the upside right here and we have volatility. Okay. We don't have volatility on this graph, but, uh, this negative slope on the weekly time frame not necessarily good. The monthly is still up and, um, that is good in general. And the last one I'm going to bring up here, uh, for, for, for the bulls out there, uh, on the weekly time frame. Oh, there was the blue buy signal on the weekly for CMEs on the daily. Did it print? Did it print the, the famous blue buy signal on CMEs? So it did print back there, but we already took out that. Oh, we haven't taken out the low. Yeah, so it doesn't take out the previous low. So uh, every time this signal prints in Bitcoin's history, I think there's been 18 iterations in Bitcoin's history. Six, 16 out of 18? Bitcoin has never broken the prior weekly low, which would be this area right there. So we've had a lot of times where we've come back and tested the low, wick below the low, but never on a candle body closing basis has it closed below the prior low. So there's your point for the bulls right there, right? Now, uh, <clears throat> does this price action look good? No. Um, it and that, that low, what, it, what, what the theory is, is that you get the blue buy signal and Bitcoin will not take out the prior weekly low before making new all-time highs. New all-time highs. So um, TA is not an exact science. It's more of an art form. And that's why we are using all of the indicators to kind of come into confluence with each other and give us a bias right now. So that was your point for the bulls. Um, let's see if we got any other more points for the bulls. Um, what am I seeing right here from the high to the low on the FIB? We just got a weak bounce up to the 382. Where does a strong bounce come up? Well, this is on the 15 minute time frame. A strong bounce, the 618. And even on the 15 minute time frame, as long as we are below the not 0.5 and the 618 which is this area right here. Pressure is going to be on to the downside. Uh, there is your M123. Wow, just notice how these M's uh, work out. Wow, call this an M. The measure move on an M is to the prior. There's your M. Getting a bit of a retracement and uh, where's the next target down off of the Fibonacci retracement tool? It's probably going to be that 1618 coming in at 25,090. Let's see if we can line that up with some liquidation levels on the charts here. 
High Block Capital shows where everybody gets liquidated on Binance, the biggest exchange with the most futures traded volume. You got liquidations to the upside to the tune of 100 million, about 120 million up there at Right at that 9.5 in the 618. So yeah, everybody is putting their stop losses uh, probably right, right above those areas if they already in a short. You know, stop losses are coming in up in that area. Um, so after a big, you know, rally yesterday and it just got faded, just got pumped to the downside, no follow through. Point for the bears there. Um, people are net long right now. So if they're going to liquidate more people, well, it's got to come to the downside and hit these pink areas, which 25,300 is going to ma be a major level and 25,100, uh, another major level. If you start breaking back below there, get your warning signs on. Um, and really, uh, on the weekly time frame, CMEs will close the week today. If we do close the week making a lower low, which we are not at the moment, and we are far enough away to where I say, well, are we? On CMEs, in fact, uh, that would be a candle body closure uh, lower low there. That, that would be a lower low, but on the daily, oddly enough, the daily there is not a lower low. It's a higher low but there is lower lows than this low. So I guess that that kind of thwarts that position. Uh, let's take a look at any more points for the bears. Okay, the next one I wanted to bring up here is the five day volatility. Uh, sorry, let me finish the point I was gonna make here on the weekly time frame. It, not, in, not, not exactly, so we are closing today. Momentum is to the downside and volatility is beginning to increase. Close enough is close enough. If we get any kind of expansion on this, well, I would suspect that we get a bit of a continuation play. Where was the official cross down? Right here. So let's mark that off. I think the average move on the weekly time frame is going to be pretty, pretty darn big. Um, when volatility expands, we define expansion above 25 percentile. That is going to initiate the rest of this move. We already got the first part of it, which is roughly 12%, 28%. That's right in line with the average. I think the max is probably around 50%, uh, 60%. So you take the, um, what is the first standard deviation? It's probably going to be around 35%, 30%. So if we do get expansion as momentum continues to the downside, steeply down below 29,237, if we can close above there, which we are very, very far away from right now. And yeah, that will flip momentum back to the upside. So what we want to see is price stay sideways for the next week going into the date that I've been talking about, the quadruple witching likely to bring some volatility into the market going into Friday next week. So Bitcoin needs to hold for another week and point for the bulls and uh, point for the bulls is this. NASDAQ is just continuing onwards and upwards and did break back above that trend line. Is that the right trend line though? Let's see. That is not. So I'm going to get rid of this M and C if there is any kind of a chance for some upside continuations. Oh, and we did outline that yesterday on our TikTok, TikTok live stream. Did you guys hear about the Restriction Act? The Restriction Act, uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty uh, interesting here. But noticing right now a bit of a W formation, and as long as we are you know, above this region right here, well, it's onwards and upwards for NASDAQ. You start closing back below there, and that's where this thing gets more likely to test the gap down. S&P 500, again, has the head and shoulders formation, needs to break this level at 43.71. Uh, Dixie has been very, very bullish and could be putting in a bit of a short-term top. Um, again, as long as we are, you know, 
above the green 55. Uh, we we're in a nice little uptrend on the daily, so I would expect some more continuations. And volatility is just beginning to expand. So point for the bears there. <clears throat> Bitcoin dominance holding its little bear flag hasn't broken the critical level. Um, Ethereum Bitcoin also still looking for that kind of move to play out uh, for alt season to get started. And tether dominance, uh, we don't want to see a closure back above this level. Um, and we might even be able to move this down a little bit, but I'm going to keep it where I have it at the moment. And what coins are bleeding it out the most? How's my golds doing? Gold is hitting our trend line and coming back down. Um, I think gold at least swipes the lows here one more time at 1891 for, um, oh, you know, and then the big move down would be down to 1812, which if the dollar continues to rally, I would suspect that the move plays out. Uh, silvers, where are my silvers? So silver is playing out the move to the downside and did come back down to the box of peace and prosperity that we talked about. We just need to hold that level. As long as we hold it, we're good to go on silver. And... What's your favorite altcoin? What's your favorite altcoin? Ethereum is the digital silver of the world. And are we still stuck in the four hour range on silver? Uh, getting rid of some of the trend lines. And I do suspect that uh, if we do play out a downside move, well, Ethereum probably not going to be the beneficiary in that case. Probably going to be weaker than Bitcoin as 1616. Uh, 16, did get hit, or no, it did not, 1615, yeah, 1615 did get hit to the downside. <clears throat> what am I seeing on the 15 minute time frame? Yes. Again, the cone theory I spoke about earlier this week, the cone theory, uh, I believe I had it set up more on Bitcoin, not on this one, but our kind of cone theory I believe, no, that, that doesn't work. Where did my cones go? Was the cone on Ethereum playing out? And I think, yes, I had it drawn, drawn out like this. What's the cone theory? Well, they're taking out all the stops. Taking out all the stop losses. To the downside, it would be more like this. Boom. So until the cone is broken to the upside of the downside, uh, if we do break it to the upside, going to test that purple 200 at 1717. If we break it to the downside, going to test this trend line at 1566. That's it for today, guys. Make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you have a great weekend. I will see you guys on Monday. Have a blessed and highly favored day. Thanks.